Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proenza and today we're going to talk about problem set 1, meal time of CS50 introduction to programming with Python. So if you have any question about programming or about your career, schedule a free meeting with us, the schedules are in the description. And we would like to emphasize that this video solution is made for those who have already finished the, the assignment and want to have another view about the problem, alright? So we do not support plagiarism. Okay, so in this problem, we're going to implement a program that prompts the user for a time and output whether it's breakfast time, lunch or dinner time, all right? So we know what are the times for each case in here and we have to get this time and convert some way. All right, so we kind of have here the pseudocode. They are basically asking us to have a main function and an auxiliary function to convert the time, all right? And we have this if statement here. I already put the pseudocode in our interpreter, all right? And I also put some comments here, the step-by-step -step we have to do, okay? But before we dig into what we're gonna do here, let's understand this idea of the main function, splitting into this main function if name, all right? So like we can see in here, uh, some programming languages have a special function called main, which is the execution point for a program file. Python interpreter, however, runs each line serially from the top of the file and has no explicit main function. So kind of using this definition of main function is optional. If you don't want to use it, that's fine. But if you want to have a better code looking in a different way, you can use this definition, all right? Python offers other conventions to define find the execution point. One of them is using the main function and the underscore underscore name underscore underscore property of a Python file. All right. In some Python scripts, you may see a function definition and a conditional statement that looks like the example below. In this code, there is a function called main that prints the phrase hello world when the Python interpreter executes it. There is also a conditioner or if statement that checks the value of name and compare it to the string main. When the if statement evaluates to true, the Python interpreter executes main. So now that we understood how the main function works and this part of the if condition, let's just start adding things in our code to work, all right? So basically we need to get the time from the user. So how can we do this, all right? Like we can see in here in this example, we're going to ask the user for its time. We can see here what time is it and the user is going to print a time, all right? So how can we prompt a question? Let's see the input function. Basically, the function input allows us to ask questions to the user and the answer that the user typed in, we can store in a variable. For example, if we want to ask the name of the user, we can do username equals to input, what's your name? And it will be prompt in the terminal, the user can write his name. If the user types in Giovanna, the variable username will store Giovanna. Since the answer is stored in a variable, we can use this answer in our code. So now that we saw how it works, let's start implementing, all right? So here, I'm gonna create a variable called answer, all right, answer. And this variable is going to store the answer of the user. So we're gonna use the function input. And inside, we're gonna prompt a question. So what will be this question? We're gonna say, what time is it? All right, so let's say here, what time is it? Okay. And if we test this in here, if we do python meal.py, we can see that, oops, it's not gonna work because we have this definition here. Let's try one more time. So if we do here pythonmio.py, he's asking us the time and we can output anything. All right, this is it for now. We have hit here this function convert and he's receiving time, all right? What are we gonna do here? We're gonna use this convert function, okay? And this convert function is going to get the hour and the minute and make this into a float, all right? So instead of saying 7.30, we're gonna say 7,5, all right, 7.5. So it will, will return the time into a number, okay? So let's understand how this part of creating an auxiliary function and storing the variable works before we start. 
The return keyword in Python exists in a function and tells Python to run the rest of the main program. A return keyword can send a value back to the main program. While values may have been defined in a function, you can send them back to your main program and read them throughout your code. Let's use one example of the return statement to illustrate how it works. Say that we are creating a program that calculates the double of a number. We could accomplish this task in using the following code. We declare a function called double num that multiplies the received number by 2. In this case, the received number is 5, so our program returns 10. Then, the variable x will hold the value 10 since the function double num 5 returned this value. So this is pretty much what we're gonna do. We, we're going to create a variable here that will start the time, all right? And this time will be the convert will be the time that the converted function will return to us. All right, so we're creating here a variable called time, and we're gonna start here the we're going to call the function to start this return. All right, so since the function called convert, we're gonna say here convert, and we have to pass a variable. In this case, we're not gonna pass time. The variable that is storing the time that the user sent to us is called answer. So we're gonna send answer. All right. Now let's start working with our function. The first thing we're gonna we have to do is we have to convert this number that it's seven colon thirty to seven to start the number seven for the hour and thirty for the minute. All right. So the first thing we have to do is creating two variables, one for the hour and one for the minute. How are we gonna do this? Let's take a look at the split function. The split method splits a string into a list. You can specify the separator and the default separator is any white space. Let's suppose we want to split our string txt, which holds the value high everyone, into two. We can use the notation of creating two variables in the same line by doing x comma y. Then we assign x and y to the result of the split method. So we do x comma y equals to txt dot split parentheses. In this case, the split method will separate the string in where there is white space. In the end, x will hold the value high and y will hold the value everyone. Let's see another case. Let's suppose our txt variable holds the value apple comma banana. In this case, we use the split method again here, but instead of doing txt dot split Split, we do txt dot split and inside the parentheses we're gonna use quotation mark comma so in this case we want to separate our string by comma this means that we're going to split this string every time we have a comma in the end x will hold the value apple and y will hold the value banana so we kind of understood how it works right the split method so let's see here the example that cs50 gives to us as a hint we can use this notation here hours comma minutes and now we're gonna use time dot split and we're gonna split in the colon all right so we're going to get seven for the hours and 30 for the minutes all right so let's do this in here okay hours and minutes and we're getting the time and split now we have to convert our time into a float number right so to do this we have to convert our minutes instead of our of our minutes being between 0 and 59 minutes we have to transform this into 0 and 1 all right because here we're going to convert this into a float, all right? Our 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 until we reach the number one, all right? So how can we do this? We're gonna create a variable called new minute, all right? And we're going to divide the minutes that we have in here by 60. Why 60? Because here we know that, keep in mind that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So we're kind of going to think. The rule of three is a mathematical rule that allows you to solve problems based on proportions. By having three numbers, A, B, C, such that A divided by B equals to C divided by the number that we want. You can calculate the unknown number. In our case, we know that one hour we have 60 minutes. Let's suppose we want to convert 30 minutes into a number between 0 and 1. We can do x divided by 1 equals to 30 divided by 60. To find the value of x, we divide 30 by 60 and the result is 0 0.5. This will be the main idea in our convert function. All right, so we're gonna say minutes and we have to do a uh, casting here, all right? We're gonna convert these minutes because remember, this is a string, we have to convert this into a float, all right? So we're gonna do float minutes and we're gonna divide by 60. 
all right and then in the end we're gonna return this value we're gonna return hours so we have to cast hours flow float hours plus new minute all right and this will return as a number let's see what this is so let's print here time to understand so if i run here in the python code we have what time is it if i put 7 30 it should return us 7.5 right because 30 minutes is the half between 0 and 60 and it's the end 5 it's the 0.5 is the half between 0 and 1 all right if we call the function again and we do 1 comma 25 it will return us 1.416 blah 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 all right so he this is kind of doing this float we're converting the minutes into a float all right now with this number in our hand we have to do an if and else can statement to check if we are in between the time that we are expecting here for each breakfast lunch and dinner all right so let's understand first the if and else condition and then we can understand how we're gonna do this Python if and else statements help coders control the flow of their programs. An if and else Python statement evaluates whether an expression is true or false. If a condition is true, the if statement executes. Otherwise, the else statement executes. Let's suppose we want to check if a number is greater than 10. The number we want to check is storing the variable x. We can check if this number is greater than 10 by doing if x operator greater and the number 10. If this condition is true, we're going to print numbers greater than 10 only. Otherwise, if the condition is false, we're going to have our else statement. In the else, we're going to print any condition satisfied. Let's see one example in the code above. Let's suppose that x stores the value 7. The if condition won't be true because 7 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the else, printing any condition satisfied. Let's do another example, making the variable x holding the value 15. In this case, the if condition will be true because 15 is greater than 10, and we will print numbers greater than 10 only. After that, we won't see the else condition condition because we already found our right condition. A Python elif statement checks for another condition if all preceding conditions are not met. They appear after a Python if statement and before an else statement. You can use as many elif statements as you want. Now that we've learned elif, let's improve the previous code with an elif statement. Let's add one more condition where we want to check if the number is less than zero. In this case, we would write elif x, the operator less, and the number zero. If this condition is true, we will print negative numbers only. Let's see one example in the code above. Let's suppose that x stores the value minus 5. The if condition won't be true because minus 5 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the elif block. Now we're going to check if this elif condition is true. Since minus 5 is less than 0, we will print negative numbers only. After that, we won't see the else condition because we already found our right condition. Let's do another example, making the variable x hold the value 5. In this case, the if condition won't be true because 5 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the elif condition. Again, this elif condition won't be true because 5 is not less than 0. Then, we will skip the elif block and go to the else condition. In this else, we're going to print any condition satisfied. So, now let's see. We have this idea of if and else statement in our mind. So, let's do here the first if statement. So, if and what is the time for breakfast? It's 7 until 8, right? Since we already converted our time into floats, we can do if time greater or equals to 7 and y n because it needs to be in this range of 7 and 8 a.m. So if time greater or equals to 7 and time less than or equals to 8, we're gonna print breakfast time. Breakfast time. All right, like we can see in here in our example. All right, else else if or you can if you want you can use a if statement all right here we're gonna do the same but we has to be in the range of 12 and 13 so if time is greater or equals to 12 and time less than or equals to 13 we're gonna print lunch time 
lunch time. And finally, dinner, we're gonna do the same, but it has to be in the range of 18 and 19, all right? And time less than or equals to 19. And we're gonna print dinner time. And one thing that is important to remember, you have to say the name of the variable and the operator, and when you use the operator and, you have to say again the variable and the operator you wanna compare, right? We can't do this, this following, we can't say and blah blah blah, we have to be explicit in which variable we are working, all right? So let's test. If I put in here 7.30, it will return as breakfast time. If I put here uh, 18.59, it will return as dinner time, all right? And if I put here midday, it will return as lunch time, all right? So now let's do this 50 check, and then if we got our green, we know that we are correct. So like we can see in here, we got all green, all right? So this seems that we are correct, okay? Uh, if you enjoy this content, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and if you have any questions, send here in the comment, or if you want to schedule a free meeting with us, all right? Hope to see you in the next video, bye-bye.